hello everyone. My name's um, Jo Meredith and I am an HR and L&D consultant. My background is in hospitality. I actually started in hospitality when I was 14. It made me want to go to catering college. I started life as a chef, not a very good one, and soon found my path into human resources. So my last permanent role before I became self-employed two years ago, I was the HR director at the Ritz in London. I worked there for 14 years. Um, and then I took the leap to become self-employed. So many of the um, clients that I work with are within the hospitality industry, which is an industry that I love. Okay, um, hi everyone, I'm Nina Lovett and similar to Jo, I started off life working um, as a Saturday girl in a tea shop, a famous tea shop in Wiltshire and just loved it and went on to have various other part-time and um, holiday jobs when I was a student, um, studied hospitality and, and catering and then went to work for Hilton but in sales and marketing okay. function. Um, in the early 2000s, um, I decided that what I really wanted to do was go into learning and development. So I've been a freelance facilitator and coach working largely in hospitality since then. Very cool. Very cool. So we're here to talk about a project that you guys have been building and kind of put together to help and support people. Tell me about it. Yeah. So the Next Steps Virtual Redundancy Club is something that Joe and I created, dreamt up, thought of about a month to six weeks ago. We wanted to do something proactive, firstly, to make ourselves feel good, um, but secondly, to really bring some help and support to those who needed it in terms of practical support, emotional support, etc. And that's how the Next Steps Club came about. So, I mean, all of those things you've just kind of mentioned there, the practical support, the emotional support, are all absolutely key. Um, I myself have been made redundant in the past and I know that feeling. Um, you start off kind of thinking, oh, it'll be OK. I'll kind of I'll get through this. I'm good at what I do. And then maybe you get a couple of rejections potentially. And you start to question yourself and you start to question your competence and your ability <clears throat> rather than just the circumstance. Because redundancy, I think we can all agree, is more often about circumstance than it is about us as individuals. Mm -hmm, definitely. How do you think, so how do you guys help folks with that, with that mindset? Because that's the starting point for me to really get your head into the idea that that redundancy is not about you as a person. It is more about the role. It is more about the situation that we find ourselves in. So, so there's many different parts of, of the redundancy, of the Next Steps Redundancy Club. So um, we have a 10 point checklist um, that we start with and um, we ask um, members of the club to go through the, the checklist and it gives them a step by step guide as to practical things that they need to do once they've, they've been made um, redundant. And we, we'll talk a bit, a bit more about that in a minute, but also um, there's a series of webinars um, that we would hold and that will help people in terms of their emotional resilience, in terms of carrying out a career audit, um, because let's face it, there aren't any jobs in hospitality at the minute. So it's about helping people understand those transferable skills that they have and the things that they're really good at and the things that they value and how they can take that forward into the, their next role. We also um, offer something um, called Clarity 4D, which is a personal profile. So it helps build that self-awareness. And I actually, when I left the, the Ritz and thought, oh, I need a CV. I've worked in this place for 14 years and I haven't got a CV. I actually did a Clarity 4D um, profile and that actually helped me to write my CV because it identifies for you, probably things you already know, but it helps you think, oh yeah, I'm really good at that. I'm really good at supporting people. I'm really good at inspiring people. So it helps you to, to put all those things down onto paper into your CV. So that exercise to really recognize your skills and the traits that you have within you, mm -hmm. and then actually to be able to verbalize them quite comfortably, either mm -hmm. A, in a CV or B, most importantly, in an interview is mm -hmm. absolutely key because mm -hmm. I've spoken to a lot of people who kind of really focus on that idea that being able to really nail down exactly what my skills are, my strengths are, the traits that are strong within me that can really add value to a role. It's very difficult sometimes in an interview just to be able to kind of pull them out of the air if you haven't really thought about it and planned it before. So that exercise sounds really helpful to be able to just nail that list down and say, well, actually, these are the things that I'm incredible at. These are the things that I do will add value to your business. 
Definitely. And, and it and for some people, it takes more to sort of draw that out of people. Some people are naturally good at saying, right, I can do X, Y, and Z, but others, you know, might be thinking, oh, I don't really know what I'm good at. So it's trying to help people to to draw that information out of themselves. Top draw. So you mentioned your uh, your 10 point plan. I love a 10 point plan. It makes me happy. Keeps me on track in life. I'll be honest with you. Otherwise, I end up in 52 different places. Let's start. Let's work through this 10 point plan. Then what do we, what do we begin with? Do you, do you want me to kick it off, Joe? Go on, then you kick start. Yeah. OK, so then the first point is just to take a step back and consider your current situation. How are you feeling about it? What's the impact of those feelings for you, your family and your friends? So that's like the first point, just actually take stock. Just think about where you are and what's happening. So, so, so kind of to go through that, to go through that process, what would that look like? Would you suggest having a conversation with somebody about kind of where you're at or just maybe sitting down kind of making some notes around it? I think it's gonna be different but in you know, every individual, to be honest, Kieran, I think some people will use pen and notepaper. Some people might keep a journal. Some people might want to have a conversation. Some people might just want to think about it. So, but I think it's just, we, we, we talk a lot in our emotional resilience piece around um, getting to the place of acceptance. But actually, I think the first thing to do is acknowledge how you're feeling. I think that's absolutely key to begin with, isn't it? Yeah. Tonight? owning that feeling and kind of knowing where you sit with it mm. that's that is definitely the thing that will take you towards the kind of the second step yeah so yeah because until you've second. had that acceptance you can't you can't move forward you've got to accept the situation that's happened and you know and then that's the power of where you can then move forward what are some of the barriers that stop people being able to kind of have that moment of acceptance oh i think i think um I, th I think people, you know, think, what have I done wrong? What, why me? Why have they chosen me? Why didn't they chose, choose somebody else within the organisation? Um, you, you know, that they might sort of think about all the scenarios that have happened, you know, over the past sort of few months. I think, God, maybe if I'd have done that differently, maybe I wouldn't have been made redundant. And, you know, it's really about understanding, you know, Quite, redundancy is about the role it's not about the, the person it's that role is no longer needed within that organization for whatever reason so it's about you know understanding that and having that acceptance around that which can be really hard and can take time and I think talking to people about it not bottling things up inside you and you know taking things out of perspective uh, keeping a good perspective is very important Absolutely. So that um, that feeling of, of, of just not quite of, of, of thinking about the things that are, every situation has happened. And again, we've all done that where you just play things over and over again. You think, oh, if I would have done that slightly differently. I guess you're moving into that situation is you can't actually influence that anymore. It's happened. It's history. It's mm -hmm. gone. So the more time you allow yourself and aim yourself to sit reflecting on that and kind of focusing on that, then for sure, as you say, you're never going to take that step further forward because you're constantly going to be anchored to the past rather than kind of thinking about the future. Amazing. So step number two, what are we looking at next? Well, I mean, what I was going to suggest is that one of the, the next kind of steps, we've got a couple of other ones that are quite practical, but I think that the one we want to focus on here is actually doing a career audit and actually thinking about what skills that you're really good at and what value you bring and how you can help a future employer or a future organization and you know your skills really and actually get people to kind of think about where their strengths lie what they like doing what do they feel passionate about etc cetera, etc cetera. so defining those skills um again it can be quite challenging i think culturally we're not we're not braggers by nature as as british people you know we we keep things to ourselves. We'd, we're not overly kind of overt with our skills. So it's really, it can be quite challenging to actually put a list together and mm -hmm. say, well, actually I am really good at these things. What sort of, do you have any exercises that you would yeah. walk somebody through with to help them be able to kind of, to, to create that idea and that understanding? Yeah, we have. One of, the, one of the things that we recommend people do when they find themselves in this situation is actually get a pen and paper or get your laptop and make a list of every single thing in your career or in the team you were last in that you're proud of 
And it can be something really small. I made a cup of tea for my colleagues every day, every morning, you know, it could be something like that, or it could be something really huge. You know, I delivered this event and this project. It doesn't matter how big or how small or in between it is, just make a list. So that comes down as well to perception of, of value of those things that you can be proud of. So that idea that every day I made somebody a cup of tea, well, it's not about the cup of tea. It's about the way that you made that person feel yeah. every time you gave them the cup of tea. It's about the way that you then kind of put 50p in the meter and sent them off about their way to go and really deliver and make their day a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Definitely. absolutely. Mm -hmm. Go on, Joe. Yeah. No, I, I, I totally agree. And, you know, it's it's um, about helping, you know, as you say, it might not be that obvious about how you are, are supporting other people. But, you know, that is a really good um, transferable skill. I think uh, within this industry, we we're probably one of the best, I think, for creating a, 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 a collection of transferable skills mm -hmm. um, that can move across different industries. Um, what would you say are the kind of if you were going to kind of pick up maybe down the top three uh, skills that hospitality will teach you that could easily be picked up and taken somewhere else, what would you say they are for anybody who's sitting listening? Gosh, uh, there's loads. I mean, the levels of service, I mean, some of the um, hotels that I've worked in, I mean, the level of service, um, you know, to being able to have those customer service skills, agility, you know, no day is ever the same in a hotel or within hospitality, being able to uh, meet deadlines, being able to, you know, juggle 101 different situations. You know, these are all things that other employers in other industries would look skills that they would love to have. I mean, especially around customer service. I mean, I was lucky enough to work at the Ritz and the, the service levels there were e extraordinary. They're exceptional. And, you know, if you think of maybe a call centre or um, an industry that wants to have great service, they need to look no further because people in hospitality are natural. I always used to say to sort of my line managers, you know, don't look for the skills, look for the person. You know, it, you can train someone to wait on tables. You can train someone to, you know, cook to a certain degree, but you can't train someone to be nice to people. You can't train that passion um, that people have within hospitality. It's something that's inherent and something that, that comes naturally. Yeah, I mean, I think back to when I was an operator and I was thinking about kind of who I was recruiting. I, I was in complete agreement with you. And I, the technical skills are, they are what they are. You know, I can, you can teach anybody how to do pretty much most things. Yeah. But what I always looked for was that care gene that ran through them. So that act, that what activities do you do kind mm -hmm. of, I don't know, do you, can you share on your CV that you do outside of work that demonstrate that actually you care? Uh, mm -hmm. What stories can you give me that tell me and show me um, and, and that will connect with me mm -hmm. that, that make me think, well, actually, you know what? You are the type of person I want in my business. Mm -hmm. Skills are the skills, you know, I yeah. think we can all agree. They, we can, we can yeah. do whatever with those. Yeah. But if somebody doesn't care enough and they're right in the first place, mm -hmm. a little bit about more about somebody else than they do themselves. Yeah. Definitely. They're never going to be successful. Quite often when I'm interviewing, I'll always ask the question, you know, tell me something about yourself that I can't see from your CV. And quite often I find out more about that person by asking that question than I do from all the other questions that I ask. So what sort of information do you think people should be putting on their CVs that could potentially give a, a potential employer, a recruiter, that kind of insight into them? I think, um, you know, so not just about, you know, I've worked here, here and here, so, so sort of bullet pointing, uh, you know, some of the key things, some of the key achievements, if there's any sort of metrics that they can add, I, you know, I increased sales by 20%, that kind of thing, but also about things that they do outside of, of work as well, because it's your CV, yes, it is about your career history, but it's also about you as a person as well, and your personality can come across in your CV you know I'm not saying you have to have your picture or it has to be blue yellow or pink your CV but your personality can come across in your CV yeah massively massively um and I think I mean that's an interesting point you raise about the pictures it's one of the questions that gets asked a lot should I have a photo on my CV Definitely. and you know it's down to personal yeah. preference some people want to have their picture on their CV and, and other people don't I mean I've had CVs in the past where people have sent me a whole portfolio of pictures of 
you know, things that they've done. I, I recently recruited a, a kitchen porter for um, one of the clients that I work with, got hold of my email. He sent me an email with, uh, you know, about himself and a picture of himself as a kitchen porter. And he ended up getting the job because he just showed initiative. It is. And I think that also shows a level of pride yeah. that he's got that picture yeah. of himself kind of doing his job yeah. and feeling good about that. And I think yeah. that's what we're looking for, isn't it? We're looking for people who are passionate and people who are engaged. Yeah. Okay. So that kind of self audit. Yep. Yeah. Happy days. We're looking good on that. What else, what else are we going to be looking at on your 10 point list? Um, we're we're going to be looking at social media and your networking. So taking a look at that, making sure that everything you've got out there on social media is working for you, not against you. Um, and then also taking a look at your network and not just your social media network, but your face-to-face -face network as well. Mm -hmm. So within, within our industry, again, it's there are a lot of opportunities to be networking. And I think some folks have uh, a perception of networking and what it actually is. I used to have a terrible idea of it. I, I, I always told myself that I hated the idea of networking, but I didn't really understand it, if I'm entirely honest with you. You know, as soon as I was able to flip it in my own mind and just say, well, actually, I'm just going to go and have a conversation with somebody and get to know about them and hear about them. Life got loads easier, if I'm honest with you. I changed that kind of perception in my own mind. Um, what's, um, what are some of the barriers that kind of uh, members of your club kind of come across when it comes to kind of building those networks? I, th I think exactly that, scared of the word networking, you know, and a perception of what that is. And what we ask people to do and what some of the people visiting the site might like to do is it's about making a list of 10 people, you know, or five people, you know, or three people, you know, within the industry that you want to tell that you are looking for a job and start with that. And you either email them, you pick up the phone or you meet them for a virtual coffee or you meet them for a coffee if you're, you know, if that's, if you're able to do that. And you just say, I'm out of work, I'm looking for a job. Can you put the message out? And that's networking in its simplest form. And I think that's quite accessible to mm. lots of us. And then we can talk about, you know, more sophisticated networking and helping people identify places to go for them to look for specific roles and jobs. But I think in its most basic format, it's about helping people who haven't got a job understand that actually it's just about putting the message out there. I, I think, again, that's the key. We, we all have a network, you know, whether or not we recognise it for that being what it is. We do yeah. all within this industry have a network. That's yeah. just reality. Um, Marco Reich from um, Coot was talking about this. And he, he was talking about the idea that, you know, networking isn't, um, isn't drinking champagne and eating canapes. It is potentially just, as you say, kind of maybe you're at the pub, maybe you're at the coffee shop, having a chat with some people that you know within the industry and saying, look, I'm, I'm on the lookout. Yeah. Any ideas, any help that you can offer me? Yeah. And it, within an industry, that's what we want to do, isn't it? Mm, yeah, definitely. And I think Joe and I have both been in periods of, of our careers where we haven't had work. And I think we've been, both of us, haven't we, amazed at just by going out to our network, the support that you get, it's incredible. Yeah. 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 And I think sometimes you don't realise how big your network actually is mm. and, until you actually start to call on your network and, and just how supportive other people can be. You know, a lot of people are caring and they like to help other people. Mm. You know, it's human nature. Um, so, you know, that can really, and even if they can't find you a job, they could probably offer you some piece of, of, of advice or, you know, have a conversation with you about sort of resilience or if you've had a, a knockback, you know, things that, that you can do. I mean, self-care is really important and your network helps that because self-care is about, you know, talking to people, telling people how you're feeling and what you're going through. Well, I, th I could not agree more that self-care at this moment and certainly at any point when you're made redundant is mm. absolutely vital. Mm. Um, it's really easy to beat yourself up over the situation you find yourself in. Yeah. Um, but taking that time to kind of look after yourself and look after your mental, uh, your, your mental space is mm. absolutely vital. Mm. Do you have any tools that can kind of help people kind of re maybe recognize that moment when they need to focus on that self-care? Nina, do you want to talk about your wheel of... Um... Yeah, we've got, we've got a sort of... Um... We, we've taken the wheel of a life, which is a great counselling tool, and we've turned it into a self-help wheel for people who have been made redundant. 
And it's just looking at certain areas. So it could be your finances, it could be your friends and family, it could be your CV, it could be your networking, it could be your emotional well-being, your physical well-being, which is something I think we're, we're not necessarily that great at looking after as an industry, because um, we all work really long hours and eat rubbish food, even though we know we shouldn't. Um, so so all we, we've got that wheel, we've, we've taken the wheel of life and we've kind of created a little wheel of redundancy to challenge people to really think about where they're at in terms of um, right now, where they really need to be in that area, and then thinking about how they can put some very simple actions in to either help them financially or help them emotionally or help them with their sort of professional CV and, and networking. Amazing. So within your group, um, how does it work? So d d are people bodied up with individuals? Um, do they kind of work it out for themselves as to who they're going to be talking to within the, within the, uh, the, the, the group? Do you want to take that one, Sherry? Yeah, so um, so we have weekly drop-in Zoom sessions with Nina, hosted by Nina and myself, um, and where we discuss different points from our sort of ten-point action plan. Um, you know, and you know that's quite sort of fluid. It, you know, it depends. Some people, someone might come on and say, "Oh, I, I've got an interview next week. What you know? How can I prepare?" And and so it's that's sort of quite fluid. But it's about talking about things that are current and relevant to the people within the group. Um, we obviously then have the, the webinars that, that we've already um, spoken about. And we've also set up a Facebook group. Um, so again, to, for that sense of community so that people can post, you know, oh, I found this really good tip or, you know, I've read this really good blog. And so it's about sharing of information to support each other. Yeah, I think that's integral, isn't it? And I think mm. just that feeling. And again, you go back to that idea of that kind of moment of kindness. So mm. if I take the time to share that kind of that uh, that story that kind of article mm. and that helps somebody else well a i feel good because i've shared it and they feel good because they've they've taken something from it yeah. so again that little kind of the 50p in the meter again mm. there we go we're straight yeah, away there okay. Yeah. okay so what's next on the uh, what's next on anything, the... i think about per sort of personal branding so oh, yes. How, yes how you how you sell yourself i guess because that's what you're mm. ultimately um doing so looking at you know how you portray yourself to the to the world and you know is your linkedin picture of you on the beach or is it you know a professional picture the email address that you have i mean i have had some really random email addresses well not me personally but people that have emailed yeah. me that just aren't professional and it's you know it's little things like that about you know how you can stand out from from the crowd and how you sort of present yourself. So it's about having sort of practiced your your, your interviews and how you come across to other people. So I think personal branding is 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 very important. About you know when you're being interviewed, are you looking at the person that's actually interviewing you, or are you looking mm. at the floor? You know. Did you forget your umbrella and you've turned up and you're soaking wet, or did you plan that it's going to rain today? I'm going to need an umbrella. Uh, you know, all those, all those kind, kind. Although you probably won't if it's a Zoom interview, but all of those sort of kind of things about how you come across to other people, about your body language, about your tone. You know, are you talking too quickly? Are you talking too slowly? Um, I was talking to um, somebody the other day and they had, because obviously they've had such a huge response to their, um, their advert, they had a very structured interview process and they had 10 questions and they were asking those people 10 questions and within the 30 minutes. And if someone only got to question number four, that was their interview over. So it's about, you know, how you can sell yourself succinctly and not, you know, ramble on for hours and hours and, you know, getting your point across. And I guess that's where the preparation really comes to play. So all of those kind of audits mm -hmm. that you've talked about, that mm -hmm. kind of self-evaluation, mm -hmm. creating that list, knowing exactly the points that you need to be hit and the marks that you need to be make that to, to clearly demonstrate your skills, the traits, the attributes that you have that will add value to the organization. Mm -hmm. That's the thing that's going to help you to be succinct and to the point. Yeah. And also making sure what you've written on your CV is what you say when you're being interviewed. Because if you've said, oh, well, I've increased sales by 20%, and then in the interview, yeah, I increased sales by 30%. So making sure that what you, what you say is what's reflected in your CV is very important. 
Yeah, I think honesty and consistency. It's one of those yeah. trust trust is key in any mm. employment choice, is a mm. simple answer. Mm. And and if somebody gives you a reason to question that choice, well, as your friend was finding the other day, you're getting a lot of applicants coming through mm. for jobs. So mm. we just need to be careful. We need to be clear that we're not going to give a, a potential recruiter any reason at all to question mm. us or to put us on the pile that said exactly. then not today. Mm. Not today. Well, I have to say, I think your club sounds amazing and it sounds like you're creating you. something, a real community that is going to make a massive difference to the people who are taking part thank of it. You. And thank you for your time today. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you both. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kieran. It was great. Great to talk to you. And we love the fact that your personal brand is all about the hat. Yes. <laughs> I work a lot on a personal brand. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you.